Hi, hello everyone. Uh, and we are back again into another episode as such of the Amazon layer. And today we are graced with Zhao Martins, who's who's joined us from Yapali. Uh, welcome, Zhao. Thanks for taking out the time on a sunny-ish Friday afternoon to do this. Um, Tell us a little about yourself, a little about uh, Yapali, where we are, where you started off. Thank you. The pleasure is all mine, and I really appreciate to be part of the, the ozone layer. Um, we, I didn't have a chance yet to look outside. It's been so such a busy, so I don't know if it is sunny or raining. You know, the, the summer is not being uh, great lately, but it was a nice start. Of, um, we So my, a little bit about myself. I am, uh, as you can see, I'm from a similar generation as Freddy. We've been from the, the times where there was no internet or there was no web. And uh, you know, my internet career um, or my uh, the, uh, professional career is always going close to how the internet has been coming, especially on the web. I've been working in many different uh, uh, verticals. And um, Yapli has been my first finance industry. It's surprisingly, but applying technology, um, it's it's been my bread and butter uh, for many many years now, and uh, the interconnectivity of services, um, it's kind of coming late to the to to the banking industry, but I think it comes to the right timing. Uh, people really need to have this uh, control of their data, control of their services. Um, so Yapli was created exactly three years ago. I just celebrated my third anniversary at Yapli. I was employee number one. And <laughs> thank you very much. And we just started when even OBIE was opening up their workshops. And uh, I was fortunate to start as well. And that's where I met uh, most of the founders of uh, Ozone um, that had a very similar journey as Yapli. Um, Yapli uh, immediately saw that open banking was not just banking, it was going to be open finance, and Yapli was designed, and the, all of the technical architecture of lab, Yapli was uh, gauged towards that direction as well. Cool. I mean, it's, it's, it's an interesting journey, right? Uh, as, as, as you said, we've we come from the days, as, as, especially with, with my background, I've come from the days in India where getting to a bank and lining out lining up at a counter and getting someone to update what's what's called a passbook which which basically has your bank statement and then uh, in in the very early years of my career seeing uh, uh, any bar branch banking as it as it started to be called because uh, before that you had to bank only at your branch to this point where we are, where uh, organizations outside of the bank can connect it to the bank. And I guess you guys are in the center of that technology. So it must be quite a exciting journey getting getting there, right? Um, how, how big is the Yapali network now? How many banks are you all connected into? We, we the measurement of number of APIs that uh, companies like ours connect to, it's being measured by many different ways. I, we've seen other companies measuring how many endpoints they have, how many, they call it an API, they call a collection of endpoints, probably utilizing the same domain of service. Mm -hmm. we, we consider them as brands. Uh, we call them institutions. So we are now connected to almost 600 institutions from the UK to Europe now. Um, and but depending on the view, it could even be two thousand if you include sandboxes as well. If you include business types okay. accounts, so that variance we are not we are aggregating them as the same brand. And is there is there an approach that you follow in choosing which which ones kind of get connected to first? Does does that kind of maximize as such uh, the access that your customers end up? having into into the banking industry i think that the, the, that decision changed over time when we were just starting it was clear that we could only use the banks that were available so there was not many options uh, we would just go to the banks that had a live access or do they do have a, a, a good sandbox or they have documentation that we could test uh, ahead uh, nowadays 
our expansion is driven a lot by our customers and where is the market opportunity uh, there are many many open banking apis already available through across europe in many countries even the uk out of the 400 regulated banks uh, do we need to add all of them so that expansion is a, a lot driven by by our customer demand um, th there are of course uh, the easiness of connecting to a bank also facilitates that so we could penetrate in a new market if they, they have already a standard that we could just plug it in and test it and then offer that to the, to our customers so it is a bit of a chicken and egg but we are now kind of a, a lot of people wants to get to the chicken already so we we start ahead and we we get something and then we just when that market is kind of ready on the demand and also on the offering then we go full steam and we get at least 80 percent of the bank accounts of that market so when we offer a country just like we have announced recently like spain we it, spain was the first country that we integrate even before the uk but we didn't announce mm. it we only announced it when we reached the 80 percent of bank accounts available for uh, personal accounts and business banking as well that's that's sizable coverage. I mean, even even looking at the short frame of time of 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 the three years that you've been operating, if you're hitting eighty percent of the markets that that you operate in, that's that's substantial reach, and that's way above what a startup would be able to do. That's that's coming into the market and trying to go up to individual banks. So yes, um, that's, so that's a very interesting. Uh, proposition for people that are starting out on the open banking journey. Yeah, exactly. And uh, some of the countries like uh, like Spain or Italy, the, the banks also pivot from their previous standard to another established standard so they can, the TPP community or companies like ours can uh, onboard that bank even easier or quicker. Uh, so we've seen that in some of the markets as well. Um, so our coverage of 80% uh, is in some of these countries, but other other countries, you have much bigger coverage. Like in the UK, we have now 99%, which is uh, very, very substantial. Substantial. What What are the kind of issues that you find? I mean, these these are big numbers, right? It's... Uh, you could you could say uh, i think you can very easily say that this is unprecedented in the history of banking that an organization can cover 90% or 99% of the bank accounts in a country it's i, I don't th think people realize the degree of complexity that that goes in into achieving something like that uh, what what have been your key challenges when when you when you ended up connecting to this uh, set of organizations there are many many challenges and uh, they might they will vary bank by bank and uh, if, when you when you ask that in that way i think um on the api world it is part of what an, a good api is about so the biggest challenge if i can compile that in a single word will be uncertainty might be, you know, a, a amalgamation of all of the problems that you might find on an API in one single thing is that you don't know exactly what's going to happen when you start. Um, if you solve all of the problems of an API, or if you you have the the best, well, I'll I'll get back to that. What is a great API afterwards? But uh, the the challenges that we face are the banks having a playground for us to, to, to test. So sandboxes, a lot of the sandboxes, they are completely different from their live environments. So that comes that uncertainty. We got burned many multiple times when we were very, very confident that the sandbox will be amazing and we have everything connected. And then we go to a live customer and it just collapsed and it doesn't work. Um, so that uncertainty, what they gave us is exactly what we're going to find. Then we have um, when they say they are from their documentation, sometimes the banks say something, but they behave differently. So sometimes they don't even know <laughs> about that. Uh, and that might be the immaturity of this industry yet. And we are kind of the pioneers and we are the ones 
opening up the path to get good APIs. So the this uncertainty is the one the you know the pioneers always suffer. They are the ones discovering. They want the ones yeah. getting to the storms and then overcoming them, and then they 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 draw the maps to get into the to the good place. So. <laughs> So that's that's the the biggest challenge is uh, about the unknowns, and these are probably learnings that we can take into new markets as as we start operating over there. And um, as as you know, a lot of us end up talking to market makers, and we've we've often been advising that uh, exactly what you described. You know, the machine uh, machine readable specification of what's what's been implemented the ability to discover what's been implemented is is one of the most difficult but probably one of the key things that that uh, you you need to have in in markets to to have a stable and reliable ecosystem um we will keep pushing for that let's <laughs> let's see where it goes yeah i completely agree in this uh, interoperability of systems we are involving humans in the middle and that's why the apis are still being designed for humans to read and that's why you need still documentation you still need to have the testing accounts you need to have a lot of things for the humans that are going to make the integrations but in the ideal world you remove the human element and you can just absolutely plug on play some point in the future. I'm Some point, sure. yes. I guess at least one one of the things that the RTS and PSD two got right was at least putting it into legislation the the importance of having a sandbox available. And I guess through experience, you you've seen the necessity of it as well. The, um, we we hope to see uh, the regulators kind of getting a little more serious about how banks are dealing with that. And maybe all these things will help you to your journey of getting to that ninety nine hundred percent. I completely agree. And the fact that our first bank that we connected to was uh, BVVA in Spain, then then Deutsche Bank in uh, in uh, Germany. It was even before open banking existed. But we were stubborn and we didn't do any screen scraping or reverse engineering APIs because we definitely believed that the regulation with PSC2 and uh, how the, the UK, the FCA and the CMA were really pushing for this initiative. So we really trust the, the ecosystem. And that's the evidence that uh, the UK became the pioneer of open banking because there was this driver and this push to, to make it happen very quickly. Uh, well, uh, quickly in the, you know, at least in the banking timelines. <laughs> oh, certainly. I mean, I, uh, with, with my experience at open banking, I think, uh, very rapidly from the first year of everyone looking at us and saying you're, you're trying to achieve something that's impossible in the banking world to uh, maybe a couple of years down the line looking back at what what had been done and go oh we didn't know we could uh, we could actually do that I think everyone collectively has has been uh, thrilled and surprised by the by the outcomes we achieved in the UK. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'm and very uh, proud to be a part of that. And a lot of countries, whenever I talk with uh, other pioneers in those countries, I definitely suggest them to see the journey that Open Banking in the UK went through. And they might sometimes just realize that things came like in a brim very, very quickly. It just it is what it is in the present. Mm -hmm. But if you look even to the version of the API of Open Banking in the UK, it, it had many many iterations so the version one is completely different than what we have now yeah. and uh, people should definitely appreciate and learn what was the journey not going through that again so utilizing an existing standard will take so much uh, element from trial and error definitely there, there have been a lot of lessons learned right and it's it's been the collective minds of the industry that that has led to that standard and you, it's it's been months and months of uh, collective inputs from a lot of industry experts that's that's led to it. Anyways, let's let's come back to the Yapali side of the story. Um, I, I know we've we've shifted very rapidly from the industry, and you touched upon this a bit, right? Where everyone who was trying to connect to the banks were trying to rely on things on, like screen scraping or reverse engineering their mobile APIs. And now we are in this world where 
banks have been asked to and have stood up their own um, API channels. And, all, and, and the API channel is almost like a first class citizen of the delivery mechanisms, right? Uh, are you seeing a wide range in uh, availability and performance and quality of these channels, or have have you seen that they are largely consistent across across the industry, or at least consistent across a geography? Yes. So we have seen that uh, you know, the, like you mentioned, you touched upon that PSC two is the main driver. So in the UK. Uh, there is a very clear deliverable. If if you want to have a good API, you just follow the open banking standard. There is no such a thing across Europe. Well, there is kind of an hybrid version of that, but it will allow a lot of uh, differences for uh, implementation of the different standards. But at least the common dominator, it is offering the the open banking data through an API that is common. And we've seen that the implementation even in the same region, like in the UK, you will see a lot of differences, even following the same standard, not only in the implementation, but as well the, the performance of it and how the their uh, technical team behind that API will give the support and they invest uh, the best technology. Sometimes legacy banks, they do have their challenges as well because they do have uh, infrastructure they need to support and getting this data out from those uh, machines might be a bigger investment than just even running building a new bank entirely. Um, so I've w we've seen that, uh, and we understand the impact of the the new technology versus the old technology. We've seen as well adopting good technology versus the, not adopting such a good technologies, and that is applicable for any industry. I'm not saying not only in the banking. So uh, also some banks opt for offering real-time access to data and others might be a near real-time but maybe it is a sufficient real-time and that reflects a lot the performance of the the api um, and the, 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 you can see that the companies that used cloud services and the ones that they still have on-prem infrastructure and that reflects as well the quality of the api that gets delivered so all of these principles are not I would say are not banking challenges. They are technology challenges. And um, I remember reading recently that all of the companies are going to be software companies. And the banks, they have to. They already started a long time ago becoming digital. And now they're becoming cloud. Now they need to become more than that. They need to become as well uh, open API access. Um, so those differences, it's not only about the standards and how do you implement, but as well the team behind it, how they implemented it, how uh, technology savvy they are. Um, was that uh, uh, a, a good implementation of the standard or not? And that that is the the what makes the success of an API starts with the technology, but then everything around it, you know the the documentation and everything else that that covers a, a, a good API. But the the performance that you mentioned, um, th what happens underlying the bank, it's also a reflection about what they can deliver through the API. Right. Uh, you you all launched the Yappily API dashboard a short time ago. Um, and, and that brings uh, the performance of, of the various banks right into the public eye. And, and a lot more than, than banks have been accustomed to seeing their tech stack being brought into the public eye in the past. Uh, tell, tell us a little about, about the dashboard, what, what brought it about. Uh, the, the Yapili score seems to be a very interesting metric over there that measures the health of the ecosystem. How, how is that calculated? Yeah, so we... It, it, it is part of our core service is to provide and have that intelligence about uh, the status quo of each one of these APIs of the banks. So we launched this a new website called apiscore.theapply.com. The, the API score um, was already a mature product that we started many, many uh, months ago to, to collect and compile the, the, the performance of the banks and also the availability 
so we could offer a good service to our customers. So we know in advance, whenever a bank makes a change or whenever there is some degradation of service, they don't even need to communicate because we can see immediately that happening on our dashboards. And we selected a, a few banks that we've, we, 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 we thought it would be interesting for making it publicly available. And they, they follow all the same standards. So the criteria right now is just because they do have the same UK standard. And um, so it is a comparable metrics. And you can even see that the, the API, the, the, the scoring, the, those performance vary with the same stack, with the same uh, kind of level of quality that people will say about their APIs because they use the same standards. Very, very similar implementations, but they vary so so differently about uh, what Does, we, the, the metrics that you can see, they vary so much. And, there's um, a huge, huge spread in, in both the score and the performance metrics. So the, we came up with a, with a Yapli score that it is a formula th that we, we built internally that will combine, uh, calculates the, and has a specific weight factor for multiple metrics, which is the throughput of the data. So it is the, the response time and also the size of the data. We select a, a few or relevant endpoints that all of these uh, banks will offer. So we don't include things that are just specific for some banks and others they don't offer. And um, so we measure as well how quickly they respond the initially. So the first ex security exchange. Um, so we combined a lot of things all together. We weight them in a way that will make sense. Uh, we weight a lot, for example, the availability. A bank that uh, um, has one failed API request in a day might not sound significant in the, in the millions of transactions, but maybe that transaction was someone trying to, buy, to pay their hospital bill and it failed. You know, so we kind of weight that in the how relevant that is for that specific endpoint. So we just uh, um, uh, define then the Yapli score uh, over seven days of the week. And then we just, so the, what we can see on that website is in real time as well with a, a small, small delay, but it, 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 it just gives a good representation about also the, tec the technical stack behind those banks. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very interesting snapshot of what's happening around the ecosystem. There's there's a very old uh, there's a very old world saying of you know what gets measured gets done. Uh, have have you seen that kind of reflect since 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 the point the uh, the scoreboard went public? Have you seen uh, banks focusing on trying to improve their scores, or uh, have you seen performance improve or the Yapli scores improve? And this way, this website is probably the version two that we made public already, and um, the fact that the, in the UK the this market is already a bit mature, there isn't much more than the banks can do to make a big difference. Um, I believe that when we expand and have more banks there, people are going to be very very surprised, and there will be definitely a race to not be at the last. Um, the ones that normally are on the top, I realize that they are already the ones that will be leading anyway, because they already have a, a good tech stack. They already, uh, they, they design their APIs up front to be good. They don't tick just a, a regulatory box and then they will be surprised how underperforming they are. So when we launched the first version that it was a little bit more uh, less publicly knowledge, uh, we definitely saw and we got in, uh, contacted by some of the banks that they they really appreciate the fact that they had an external an external validation about what they are doing and they they changed some of their requests to make it more performant. They made changes on their tech stack to be able to to climb the, the ladder of the performance. Um, but ultimately for some of these banks, it will be very difficult to change overnight. So the API score has been live for probably like a month. And uh, we have seen some uh, improvements, especially on the availability. But I believe it's the natural uh, of the, the ecosystem right now. 
it, it at least provides something for for each of the banks to aspire to right? yep absolutely it points people in the right direction it shows what the art of the possible is to to each of the banks and to an extent even gets gets the banks to challenge themselves to uh to see what's what's keeping them from those top spots which, which, which is very I, I interesting because because the banks sometimes they don't see what is possible from and, and only seeing other banks doing saying yes absolutely so we will uh give some good okrs objectives to our tech teams that are going to deliver this so when they select their providers they can already benchmark what good looks like yeah and some some very well measurable uh, kpis as well um let's let's try and get things to a wrap before we tire the viewers out so uh, couple couple of quick rapid fire questions what's what's the one feature you wish that all bank kpis had today if you could if you could force all the banks to do one big change in your, in the apis what would you go for <sighs> It's, that's a tough one for a quick rub fire because there were so many good features that I wanted to see across all of the APIs um, from having much better quality on the transactions data, you know, having the, the location of the merchant, having the identity of the merchant where the payment came from, that would be really useful for any open banking data. Having all the historic of the data, if the user owns the data, why do they have to get only 30 days of data? So that would be great to have all of their past and the, the data ownership. Um, I think the biggest feature that I would love to have is the uh, application of what it is called in the, in the industry called variable recurring payments. So one consent for merchants to take money from my bank account. I, I trust the merchant. I want them to take money whenever I make a service with this. I think this will be uh, the killer feature that will make open banking very successful. I would love to see that on all the open banking channels. I, I think that that is one transformational uh, change in the API stack in the set of APIs that's that's available today. That I, I can only wait to see the kind of uh, capabilities that we can unleash with that. My wife went That's to okay. shopping recently and she said, oh, I already see Christmas uh, uh, things in the shops. And I was really surprised. So if we are in the shopping list, I would love to have as well the identity. I think identity is another one that people uh, already discussed a lot and myself with you, Freddie, as well. Identity will be another functionality. So. If we can get a Christmas shopping list for open banking, identity, transaction data, VRP, uh, and the, the, uh, there are many, many. I, I, we can yeah, have a blog, a blog just about that. <laughs> at, at, at least identity on the top of that, because I think yeah. I think once you've got that sorted, that that really democratizes a, a lot of the things that 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 can be done with that and. The implications of that are beyond just payments, right? It's 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 such a huge deal. Yeah, it is, but it is go it goes a, a bit more than just the banking functionality. So if you now have to narrow down to a banking finance system, I would go with a variable recurring payment. But the identity it's, it, it's much broader. It's like the open data. The user owns it. If the bank knows about me, I'm happy to give that to this third party. So that will. Like you said, it is on the top of the pinnacle, but if you yeah. want to narrow down just the financial uh, exchange, then I would prefer to have the, the payments. Cool stuff. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Thanks a lot for your time this afternoon. It was a pleasure catching up after so many days. Thank uh, you very much. It was a pleasure. I hope to see a strong ozone layer. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>